Have you ever thought about how your favorite cheese is made? Whether it's the stretchy mozzarella on your pizza or the creamy slice of cheddar in your sandwich, cheese is something we all love. But how does fresh milk turn into these tasty cheese varieties we enjoy every day? What really happens inside those big cheese factories that make cheese for millions of people around the world? In this video, we're taking you behind the scenes to show you the full journey of cheese. From farm fresh milk to the final blocks, slices, and wheels you find in stores. You'll learn how old-fashioned cheese-making traditions are mixed with modern machines to create the perfect taste and texture. Curious to see how it all works? Want to know what makes each type of cheese so special? Then stick around and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a bite of our delicious stories. Receiving the star ingredient, milk. The very first step in making cheese is getting the milk. And that's the most important part. Milk is the main ingredient in cheese, so it has to be fresh and clean. Big cheese factories get their milk from local dairy farms, and it arrives in huge tanker trucks that can carry thousands of gallons at once. As soon as the milk reaches the factory, workers test it to make sure it's fresh safe, and the right kind for the type of cheese they want to make. Clean and high-quality milk helps make tasty cheese. Cheese can be made from different kinds of milk, such as cow's milk. This is the most common and is used for cheeses like cheddar, gouda, and Swiss. Goat's milk has a strong, tangy taste and is used for many soft cheeses. Sheep's milk, creamy and rich, used in cheeses like feta and pecorino. Blended milk a mix of different milks to create new and unique flavors. Every type of milk gives the cheese a different taste and texture, and that's what makes cheese so special. Separating the cream if needed. Not all cheese is made using whole milk. Some cheeses like mozzarella and ricotta are made with skim milk, which is milk with the cream removed. So how do they take the cream out? The milk goes into a special machine called a centrifuge. This machine spins the milk very fast. When it spins, the cream, which is lighter, rises to the top. Then, the cream is taken off and saved. It doesn't go to waste. It's used to make yummy things like butter, ice cream. What's left behind is skim milk, and that's what's used to make certain types of cheese. It's all part of making sure each cheese has the right texture and taste. Pasteurization making milk safe. Now it's time to make the milk safe to use. This is done through a process called pasteurization. It sounds like a big word, but it simply means heating the milk to a certain temperature to kill any harmful bacteria. This step doesn't really change how the milk tastes, but it's very important. It helps make sure that the cheese made from this milk is safe to eat and won't make anyone sick. Pasteurization also helps the milk stay fresh longer. After heating, the milk is cooled down again, and now it's ready for the next step in the cheese-making journey, adding starter cultures. Let the magic begin. Next, it's time to add some special bacteria to the milk. These are called starter cultures, and they're actually good bacteria that help start the cheese-making process. These friendly bacteria eat the milk sugar, which is called lactose, and turn it into lactic acid. This acid makes the milk thicker and gets it ready to form curds, which are the soft, solid parts that will become cheese. Different cheeses use different types of bacteria, for example. Cheddar uses one kind of bacteria. Mozzarella uses a different kind. These, these starter cultures don't just help with curdling, they also add flavor and texture to the cheese. So, the type of bacteria you use helps decide how the cheese will taste in the end. Adding rennet, creating curds, and whey. Once the starter cultures have done their work, it's time to add something called rennet. Rennet is a natural enzyme, and its job is to make the milk curdle. Curdling means the milk starts to separate into solid and liquid parts. The solid part is called curds, and the liquid part is called whey. You might have heard the words curds and whey in old nursery rhymes. This is exactly what they're talking about. 
The curds are the most important part because they're used to make the cheese, but don't worry, the whey isn't wasted. It's still full of good stuff and can be used in other ways, which we'll talk about later. Cutting the curds. Now the curds are cut into smaller pieces using wire knives. This helps more whey drain out. The size of the curds depends on the cheese. Cheddar needs bigger curds, while mozzarella needs smaller ones. Cutting helps the cheese get the right texture, draining the whey. Once the curds are cooked and become firm, the liquid part called whey is drained off. Factories use big tables or special machines to remove the whey easily, but the whey isn't wasted. It's full of protein and other healthy things. People use it to make ricotta cheese, protein powders for fitness drinks, animal feed, and even eco-friendly plastic called bioplastic. So, in cheese making, nothing goes to waste. Pressing the curds. Now the curds are put into molds that shape the cheese into blocks, wheels, or other forms. To help the curds stick together, they are pressed. Pressing squeezes out any leftover whey and makes the cheese firm. The amount of pressure and the time spent pressing depend on the type of cheese being made. Some cheeses are pressed gently while others need stronger pressure and longer time. This step also helps form the cheese's outer surface, which is important for the aging process later on. Shaping the cheese. After pressing, the cheese is placed into molds to take its final shape. These molds can be simple, like round wheels or square blocks, or they can be more fancy with special patterns and designs. The shape of the cheese is important because it affects how the cheese ages and how its flavor grows over time. Brining. Adding flavor and protection. After shaping, the cheese is placed in a salty water bath called brine. This step does two important things. First, the salt adds a tasty, savory flavor to the cheese. Second, it helps keep the cheese fresh by stopping bad bacteria from growing. The cheese can stay in the brine for a few hours or even several days, depending on the type. The longer the cheese soaks, the saltier it will taste. Aging the cheese. Time to mature. Now comes the most patient part of cheese making, aging or ripening. Not all cheeses need to be aged, but many do. The cheese is placed in special rooms where temperature and humidity are carefully controlled. During this time, the flavors grow stronger and more complex. The texture can also change. Soft cheeses might become firmer while hard cheeses can turn crumbly. Sometimes mold grows on the outside, like in blue cheese or brie, which adds to the taste and character. Aging can take just a few weeks for some cheeses, but others may be aged for several months or even years. Cheeses like Parmesan or Gouda are often aged for over a year to develop their rich, bold flavors. Packaging, ready for the world. After the aging process is done, the cheese is ready to be packaged. Depending on the kind of cheese, it might be sliced, grated, or cut into blocks. Sometimes it is wrapped in wax or plastic, and other times it's vacuum sealed to keep it fresh for longer. Once packaged, the cheese is labeled and sent out to grocery stores, markets, and restaurants all around the world, ready for people to enjoy. What happens to the leftover whey? As promised, let's talk more about whey, the liquid left over after the curds form. It's packed with nutrients and cheese factories don't just throw it away. Instead, whey is used in many smart ways. It can be heated again and turned into ricotta cheese. It's also made into whey protein, which is popular in health and fitness drinks. Farmers use it as animal feed for pigs, cows, and others. Whey even helps make bread and other baked goods. Believe it or not, it can be used to create eco-friendly, biodegradable plastics too. So the cheese making process isn't just delicious, it's also smart and good for the planet. A perfect blend of tradition and science. Cheese factories are fascinating places where traditional ways meet modern machines. The basic steps like curdling, cutting, pressing, and aging have been used for thousands of years. But today, factories use clean, safe, and efficient methods to make large amounts of cheese while keeping it high quality. Each kind of cheese has its own special recipe, timing, and tools. That's what makes cheese so exciting. There are so many different flavors, shapes, and textures to enjoy. And that's the delicious journey of cheese. From fresh milk, all the way to the tasty bites on your plate. 
Isn't it amazing how something so simple can go through so many careful steps to become the cheese we all love? Cheese making isn't just a process, it's a mix of nature, science, and tradition. The next time you enjoy a cheesy pizza, a grilled cheese sandwich, or just a slice with crackers, will you think about all the care and effort behind it? What's your favorite kind of cheese? Did you learn something new today? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this cheesy adventure, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell icon so you won't miss more fun and tasty stories.